uh, what, what, what specifically were you hoping to share for your general top 10 this week? Well, I was going into the Atari 2600 Plus because any uh, fan of retro gaming, I think that's going to be interesting to anyone. Um, so the, the, this is a product that is effectively an emulator of Atari games. So instead of you know cartridges in and out of the classic console, which not a lot of people have, not everybody has a cl- What? <laughs> nice. Does it work? Uh, I have not turned it on. I think I'm missing <laughs> I'm missing the power cable, I believe. I got it from a friend of mine. I got mine up there in the box if you need it. <laughs> oh, wait. What about that switch? What about the black and white, the B&W switch and the, the connector? Oh, yeah. The... Oh, yeah. yeah, they're all in there. Oh, yeah. The connector on the television where you had to have a like a screwdriver. Oh, the rabbit. Yeah, yeah. yeah we went to the antenna the in the park. Right. It went in. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. It's a very. No, nice it had a, like it. It had a it had a pigtail on it, and you would yeah. screw it into the back. That so, needs the adapter. Yeah. Okay. So I don't really have all of the pieces to it. Like I said, I have a friend. He was moving, and I was like, "Can I have it?" And he was like, "Yeah, whatever." <laughs> He's probably gonna throw it out. But anyway, I just well, hey, I, that works. I had so to bring it out. Basically. You, you want to share the reasons you would get the Atari 2600 Plus, let's say, or go the emulation route versus going vintage or retro collecting and actually getting the cartridges and using the uh, the classic console. Yeah, well, you know, I was really super interested about this console. Um, and it was more uh, trying to go into what makes it tick. Why did they even make it in the, in the beginning? And I think it, it is probably a misnomer for people to just look at it. It looks like it should be that console there. Uh, it's actually not, like you said, it is emulation. It is, uh, it's running on a, had it written down. It's running and this is a, the Atari 2600 Plus that you're talking yes, about, the new yes, product the that plus. you got. Okay. It's running on a, a microprocessor, so the Rock Chip uh, 31, uh, 3128 SOC microprocessor. So it's running on that. It's not running on the actual remade Atari hardware. Uh, some people might be a little disappointed in that because I think when they announced it, that's what you're thinking. It's going to be the old Atari connected to an HDMI port. Uh, that's probably the biggest pro for this when it's coming from Atari themselves. It is going through an HDMI port. So uh, some people have done soldering of uh, composite cables onto there or, or trying to get an old CRT. You don't have to do that with this. You can connect it to your modern television, uh, and it can even it even has a widescreen mode. So you can play the games in widescreen. What? Yeah. That kind of so. reminds me of the Atari VCS that they came out with a few years ago, where it was all emulated and they had an online marketplace. Yeah. So uh, I watched a video with the uh, senior director of sales uh, from there, is David R. Lowy, and he did mention the VCS. Uh, the biggest comparison between the two is that the VCS is all digital. <clears throat> like you have a physical product there, but all the games, all the software on it, it's all digital. And you're getting it directly from uh, whatever service they're providing right there. Uh, and it's all going to be downloaded into the system. Uh, the 2600 Plus is designed to work with physical hardware. It doesn't even connect to the internet. So there is going to be no, uh, yeah, so no, no web interfaces or anything like that. Uh, the VCS actually can run, has a Chrome browser on there. It's funny, the uh, uh, Lowry said that uh, he actually uses it to watch all his streaming services on there. Just logs into, uh, on his Chrome browser and watches all, whatever he's uh, subscribes to in streaming. Pretty interesting, right there, and the big comparison between the two. You know, if you if you have some of the uh, old cartridges around, or if you want to start collecting them, the new system is actually uh, might be beneficial for you if you're into the physical hardware. Wait, wait, wait. So you're telling me that the the Atari 2600 Plus, the new one, the modern one, accepts the old 2600 cartridges? Yeah. So it accepts not just the 2600 cartridges but the 7800 cartridges also. So it will play both of them, which 7800, you know, is more akin to like the NES is uh, about an 8-bit console. So it doesn't have that, that like one color blocky uh, Atari look that we all associate with Atari. The 7800, even, I don't think it lasts very long, but it was designed to compete against the NES in it. So it had, had uh, 8-bit uh, style games on it. So both games will work on it. Uh, uh, both uh, cartridges are actually the same style. 
so they'll, they'll fit right there in the port and work uh, just as normal. The uh, 50, what was it, the 5200? 5200. Yeah, the, the cartridges were bigger, so they're not obviously going to fit in the port, so you can't play those, unfortunately, but yeah, all of the um, 7800 and, and uh, 2600 can work on there. I think the 7800 was one of their bigger flops, if I remember correctly, and I think it had a lot of issues as well regarding the hardware and those kind of things so the fact is is that if you have the cartridges and most of the systems are dead by now the 2600 is obviously that bulletproof they're like an old nokia phone i was just even because you're going into that i was thinking like mm -hmm. the uh the style of the console is iconic in the 2600 yeah. versus the 7800 they try to modernize a little bit more so you know this new console uh, looks just like the 2600 with the wood finishing and stuff like that. It's actually um, it's about 20% smaller than the original console. Really? If you look, if you look at this, this is you can compare it to my head. This is That's a big head too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Huge, and his head also accepts cartridges. Just so you know. oh, right. I didn't want to interrupt or you know your your flow and getting through your top 10. You're you're specifically outlining not just the Atari 2600 Plus, but the reasons around it. Yeah, so it, I think it goes into the reasons why I think it's interesting is that it does accept modern hardware. Um, it actually works with the best, and try not to make this sound like a, a, a marketing uh, conversation here, but I mean, that's pretty much what I, it is. I, honestly, I mean, I grew up with the Atari. I think, well, some of us did at least. Uh, it's not yeah. an unknown quantity. I'm fascinated by retro gaming. Love it. Um, I, I don't, I, so I, you're not, this is not a paid endorsement at all. And I don't think anybody uh, took it as such. So you, you got it because, because why? Why did you get it? Yeah. Why? Well, it's not out yet. So I, I don't have one right now. Oh, well, there it's you go. Out, it's coming out in November. So it'll be out. Uh, but you're planning on about a month and a half. Uh, I'm really considering it because, to be perfectly honest, it's it, it does interest me, uh, especially if you're a, a collector of sorts for retro games. It, I mean, this, it's not so it's not original original really... hardware, but it's nice. Yeah, but but it works. It works with original hardware in terms of cartridges, right? And to yeah. me, that bridges the gap because I've yeah, purchased cool. the flashbacks, right? The yeah. flashback, and, and and those are fine, but you know, ultimately, they don't have the game that I want, or they don't have. It just there's something. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. it's locked into those ROMs. That's probably one of the biggest things, you know, those flashback calls. This is kind of what I kind of wish the uh, the NES Mini did, or the SNES Mini, the Genesis, is that you can put the original cartridges into it. Versus the other ones where it's a curated set of games and you can only play what's on there. And it's not designed to be hacked or, or designed to uh, add anything to it. So I, I like being Like the have... VCS was. The VCS yeah. was designed to be a bit more advanced. Yeah, it is, it is. you know, the whole PCS is, is like a modern interpretation of what Atari is uh, with the ability to not only play the old games, but even new games if they uh, decide to put some on there, which supposedly they have been putting out brand new games. They have one called Mr. Run and Jump, which I think they have a... a they have a modern interpretation of on modern consoles, but they also have an old Atari style version that um, they've made physical cartridges for and you can actually buy it right now. So um, to contextualize what you're laying out, it's not, you're laying out the top 10 reasons why you should be considering getting the Atari 2600 plus. I think that's the best way to frame the the, the, the knowledge that you're sharing right now. Yeah, and, and definitely, these are definitely some good reasons to get it. And again, and this really goes more towards the people that already have, uh, are into retro gaming. But even if you're just dabbling into it and, and are curious about it, these are some good reasons to get it versus something else. Um, I can even compare it to uh, the Retron 77 that they came out with a few years ago, uh, which is their version of Retron, who is a uh, hardware emulation company that makes uh, content Consoles, mod, like modern yeah. consoles. Hyperkin is who the, the parent company is. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and they've, they've done really good. Uh, like uh, they have Retron 5, which is great because it's one console that can play five versions of stuff. The NES, SNES, Genesis, uh, uh, Famicom. Famicom, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they have versions of that. They also have a, an Atari version they came out with. Very nice looking. Uh, it's designed to emulate the look and feel of the Atari, but it is a rectangular box. It's not the Atari. Uh, yeah. This console is designed to be the Atari, the thing that people grew up with and what brings all those nice, good feelings to everyone. So, you know, if you want something that is going to be like, you could get that, it'll probably work fine. But um, if you want something that's going to be a little bit more, uh, bringing back that nostalgia feel and you can put it on the shelf and say, oh yeah, that's the Atari. I know exactly what that is. You know, you don't have to ask any questions about it. 
Uh, 2600 plus is probably going to be right up your alley with that. Also, when we're looking at uh, going back to the game section, what I actually really uh, um, appreciated from what Atari has done is they are taking uh, pretty much all of the games that they have and testing them themselves. So the uh, they have a list on their website. You can see what games are compatible with it. Because again, this is emulation. This is not the like a recreation of the actual hardware uh, inside, at least. Uh, the testing that they have uh, tells you what is compatible, what's not. Um, I looked at the list. I'm not joking. There are only three on there that said fail. Out of all of them, they have the list of 2800 or 2600 games, the official Atari, Atari released games. They have a list of the third party released games, and then a list of the 7800 games. Uh, out of all of those, there's only three of them that said fail. There's a number on them, a number of them that haven't been tested yet, but uh, what they did say, which was pretty interesting. So the uh, console itself runs through, um, it's powered by USB-C. Uh, so that's, that's going to be your power cord to it. They said that uh, the games that do fail, they, they're putting them aside for a little bit and planning to try to make them compatible in the future. How are they going to do that without um, without internet connection? My only assumption is the USB-C port, but I found that pretty interesting that they're actually going to try to support this thing through uh, games that aren't very compatible with it at the moment. Interesting. Yeah, so you yeah. could do firmware updates over USB-C. Right. That would be cool. Yeah, that's a smart move. I mean, you, you don't have to take it online, but it's the, the port is not only for power, but for, you know, transferring files. Mm -hmm. So that, that that's a smart move to where you could do that through a firmware update. Mm -hmm. And when you say they fail, do you mean they fail with the physical cartridge? Yes. Uh, that's the physical not cartridge. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, that's so pretty cool. The, they were saying mostly the stuff that hasn't really been working were mostly like homebrew stuff. And um, uh, and and obscure Which third party things. By, by the way, yeah. like the the homebrew community. In fact, Atari, if I'm not mistaken, and quote, they were, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, didn't Atari acquire Atari Age? Yes. I, I was that. I swear that headline hit me. I'm, I'm pretty sure that you're correct on that. Um, I just where you can freely market. and they and they basically just give you the tools needed to make homebrew for the 2600. Which is so smart. I just, I mean, you're talking about a platform that is otherwise, I mean, it's all tied to nostalgia, right? Who's going to do this apart from the people that just loved it that much? So to turn that over, they're actually increasing the value, an ecosystem that is obviously still, have, there's still some interest in the sense that they, they continue oh, yeah. to try, give them credit for that, right? You know, whether it's with the VCS or the flashbacks or, or now with the Plus, try to rekindle that um, that nostalgia factor, right? So I, I think that's allowing, you know, embracing the community aspect and, and, and the, the homebrew aspect, I think is incredibly powerful. This right here, this console, it could be a good way to get people that are interested in retro gaming into the market at a much lower price uh, because you get the thrill of the hunt with the thrifting for Atari cartridges. And to be honest, those are out there in abundance over Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. Those are the three sought after the most, and, and the prices have hiked up on those. Atari cons uh, consoles and cartridges, you can buy them for pennies on the dollar at, at most places uh, that have them, uh, or yard sales. People just want to get rid of them because it's just the, the demand up until recently has not been as high for that console. So I think that they're hitting the market at the right time for, uh, you know, anybody that's looking to possibly get into it as well. So. Yeah, you know, I uh, I grew up with the Atari. I, in fact, the video, I still have it in, in my YouTube channel. Uh, I think, what's the title? Like, first Atari, 20, uh, first Atari 2600 and Lego unboxing, or I can't remember what it was. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, it was the first time I, yeah, I saw I ever set eyes on the Atari. I had no idea what, you know, home video games could be, but that's that was it. I went back years later and wound up getting a full collection of the text label cartridges, like the first cartridges they they, they, they released before they were putting stickers, uh, like with, with pictures, like full color stickers on the cartridges, like the box art on the cartridges. There was a series of, I can't remember how many, like 40, 40 some odd just text labeled cartridges. Yeah. It was just text, text on the label. And I'm not talking to the telegames, which was the Sears version 
of the Atari cartridges, but like the Atari right. Atari cartridges. Mm -hmm. And I ended up getting the full collection and a few variants of those as well. I mean, that I chased I, I chased them down, but not necessarily not necessarily to play. But now I'm like, well, now I could play them with yeah. the yeah. 2600 plus. Why not? Mm -hmm. Sorry, goat, not to interrupt there. Oh. I know Glendon and I just you know wanted a riff. Yep. No, no, that's perfectly uh, that's exactly what we're looking for, right? Um, no, it, you bring up a good point because, like, you have a daughter. This would be great to get her into retro I tried. I tried. I tried. I tried <laughs> handing her a controller, something as simple as surround. Da, 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 da. See, y'all can, like, they're all are like, da, 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 da. Oh, here comes a copyright strike, right? Like, no, I mean, I remember okay. Atari sounds like, like, yes. You know, oh, yeah. remember. See, I remember when it was uh, uh, Christmas Eve, and we had friends come over, and two things. One, uh, this is, and I remember, this is back 80s, mid 80s, right? Before home computing was a thing, I swear. And they, they, they were playing an adventure, and they showed how to get to the invisible dot. And I, I was just, I was blown away. Brian was like, what? Like, wow. Not only were they able to na navigate level three of adventure, but they found this thing that didn't exist in the instruction manual. Like this just blew my, my kid mind. I was just, what the hell? I, I only found, and I haven't like, you know, gone, you know, intensely to, you know, this is not like my purpose in life to find the invisible dot in adventure, but I did at least find it once. And uh, that, I, I felt accomplished. It's kind of like playing Cuphead and beating it. Like I did it once. I don't do it again. Uh, but that same night that I saw the invisible dot for the first time before internet, before BBSs, before you could get information like this, they showed Raiders of the Lost Ark. They, my friends, these, these, they, they put in the cartridge. And I remember watching it thinking, I never knew the movie. Right, because I couldn't see the movie because my parents wouldn't let me see it, and you know what? They were right because, quite honestly, there were some scenes that would have yeah, scarred me for life. Uh, and and so I remember seeing Kalima. them. Play the it's it, it blew me away. <laughs> No, no, that no, that was, I saw Temple of Doom in theaters. That did not scare me, or would not have scared me as much. As 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 Tote's face melting at the end of uh, and and Belloc exploding at the end of Raiders, um, but uh, watching them play the game, thinking how are they figuring this out? Like I read the instruction manual like cover to cover, and like I'm having problems like with sim you know simpler games. I'm like how did they know they're supposed to do this with that? Like it just it, it blew me away. So the, in in one night on Christmas Eve, eons ago, Raiders had just been released, so it would have been that year. I swear, the, the, or at least the Atari cartridge. Uh, and, and I saw those two things. Those two things happened, seared into my mind. Like, there's very few things I remember from childhood, but that was one of those nights. And then we went Christmas caroling. That was, that was, that was, that was fun. That was, it was interesting. Anyway, sorry, not to Wait, derail the conversation the there. Story, right? My, uh, I mean, well, you know. You bring up a good point, though. Like, even when I grew up, it was the Nintendo 64 <laughs> era. And youngin'. The, yeah, there there, was, there wasn't really an internet, or like you could get the game manuals, but to find out secrets or like hidden pathways or things of games, you 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 learn that from somebody else playing the game or friends or friends of friends. And you're like, oh, did you check this out? Did you do this? Did you do that? And there were no saves either, so you can always have to like, oh, well, for the N64 there was, but for the Atari there wasn't. So if you oh, no. didn't do it then, like you had to play through to get to that point again. It it still kind of baffles me about how people were able to find all those secrets in Zelda. Like, oh, yeah. Some of the things... Wait, which... Any which of one? Like, the original any Zelda? Zelda? Yeah. See, I that's how I played. I, well, of course, you know, I was Atari, but then I went to NES. Even the, any of them. I mean, up to the N64, they, I mean, you didn't have the internet, so you didn't... You maybe had some guides, but not everyone had a guide. And it still is like, I watch people play, and, and they're just zipping through it, knowing exactly where all these little secrets are, moving things, and, and placing bombs. I'm like, how the hell did you ever find that? Yeah, I remember borrowing... You have to abandon to vote to find... Yeah. Time. Sorry, go... borrowing uh, guides, uh... Borrowing guides through just kids and kids and kids, and that book would be so just trashed out by the time <laughs> it made its way it's around. All right. Uh, so one final thing I wanted to go into on the twenty six hundred that really kind of yeah. piqued my interest. Um, as you see, I already have one, which means I also have a controller. I have a couple of them, 
original joystick controls. I don't think I have a pedal. I might have a pedal. I don't know. You need to anyway. get a paddle. You cannot play like paddle optimized games with the joystick. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm no, no, die no. on this hill. Well, I mean, I haven't been able to turn it on, so of course I haven't been playing it with a <laughs> right, paddle. Right, right, right. <laughs> Icarus, come on. Get the peripherals. Come on, go. Let's go. Right. So, uh, the 2600 Plus, they are making brand new controllers with it. Making uh, the joystick, they're making uh, paddle controllers. Uh, the interesting thing that they brought out was that they are using the exact same blueprints that they're using for the original controllers. So they're made to the exact same specs that they were originally, down to the tension of the joystick itself, even how the button feels when you mash it. Nice. Of course, they're using the same connectors, DB9. So yep. they are backwards compatible with an original Atari. And original Atari controllers, if you have them, they are they are compatible with the new system. So you don't have to buy new controllers if you already have them. That's awesome. awesome. All right, I might buy one just for that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So I was impressed with that, especially when they said that they, they're using the exact same blueprints. I'm like, heck yeah, that's awesome. I, I like that. I might have to get one for myself and my dad because he'll see me playing it and then he's going to get all jealous because he used to play it more than I did because he was obviously older and he was... Uh, he had it before we before I was even able to play it really. So I I have some cartridges. I have uh, I don't know what version flashback it is, but again, I'd play it just pick it up, put it down if only to try to get my daughter more into it just with the I feel simple games, but now she's used to Minecraft and so playing a, a 2D yeah. like she like when I say cartoons um in her mind it's like classic Bugs Bunny Tom and Jerry, like flat 2D mm. is cartoon versus 3D, which is not a cartoon to her. So like she thinks like a lot of those retro games, she's I'm not saying she's too old for it, but unfortunately a lot of that is is completely lost on her, which is sad for me at least. That means you just haven't raised her right. This, if you want to feel really so old, <laughs> if you want to feel really old, ask anybody under the age of like 10 or 12 to hold their hand up to their face and act like it's a phone. Our generations are going to do this. <laughs> all the younger generations do this. They all, yeah. yeah. They I all do this. Oh, it's like, what the hell is this? No, g you know, give me a, a phone call. Like, <laughs> the phone. What are you doing? It's a phone. What are you talking about? And then you hang it up. This, how do you hang up? This is how you, how do you hang up a phone? Then watch him do this versus, you know, actually yeah. physically yeah. putting it on the. God the forbid rock. they ever have to use a rotary dial. 